All right, so I went to a coding boot camp six years ago, and I also helped to run a coding boot camp now. And through these experiences, I've seen what works, and I've seen the qualities that help people succeed in a coding boot camp. And so through reflecting on these experiences, I've distilled down four principles that I want to share with you about how to succeed in a coding boot camp. Let's get into it. My first principle is to focus on the process of learning rather than your results. And this is probably the most important thing. If you take nothing else from this video, remember this idea, because I think this is the idea that unlocks everything else and will help you to become successful in whatever you do, not just coding. And so what is the idea here? The idea here is that when you're learning to code, if you focus on the results, with that being your app is working or your code is running over the process, which is the act of learning, then you're going to be frustrated and discouraged most of the time because learning to code is hard and most of the time your code is going to be breaking or you're going to be getting some kind of error. And that even happens for me today as a professional developer. A lot of the time my code doesn't work. And so what do you do when that happens? You have to be fueled by the act of discovery, the act of learning, and the act of getting something to work. Another thing I've noticed as it pertains to this idea, and I've noticed it in myself as well, is that when you're worried about passing, you generally do just enough to not fail, and you're in a defensive mindset. And the problem with a defensive mindset as it pertains to learning is that you're generally leaving a lot of learning opportunity on the table. So if I'm the kind of student that is really worried about maybe failing the boot camp and my code happens to run, then I might say, hey, great, awesome, it's working, I don't know why, and just be content with that and kind of walk away. But the thing is you're leaving learning on the table because there's a whole rabbit hole to go down and there always are as to why things work the way they do and how they're working currently. And so if you can embrace your curiosity and follow that rather than focusing on whether or not things are working or not working or whether you're passing or maybe not passing at the moment, then long term, things are going to be much, much better for you because you will have learned a whole lot more by the end of the boot camp. A quick story from my life on this idea. So I was kind of this student that approached coding boot camp defensively. I'd taken out a big loan to go to the boot camp that I went to, and I felt a lot of pressure not only to pass the boot camp, but to then get a job so I could pay the loan back. And so there was just a lot of pressure, a lot of kind of intense expectations over the whole process. And I was very worried about failing. And so I ended up in this mindset where I was really only concerned with passing. And I had a lot of other uh, students that were going through the boot camp with me who started out behind, but eventually caught up because they were embracing the learning process and going down those rabbit holes, trying to figure out how things worked. But I only cared about if things worked. And there's a big difference between caring about how things work and if they work. And so eventually I reflected on this process and I realized that there were a lot of things I could have learned in boot camp if I'd been willing to embrace my curiosity a little bit more and stop worrying about whether or not I would pass. And so this idea that I just shared with you, a lot of it comes from my own experience and I'm sharing it with you in the hopes that you can avoid some of the mistakes that I made. Okay, my second principle is to be proactive. And there are a few different parts of being proactive. The first of which is asking for help. So a pattern I've seen in coding bootcamp students is that there's a little bit of a shame spiral where things aren't working, you feel like everybody else is getting it and your code should be working and then you feel like you're gonna look dumb if you don't ask for help, but then things continue to not work, you beat yourself up and you're kind of in this spiral. And so I would say ask for help, not too early, but also not too late and more than anything else, fight this shame because there's nothing wrong with things not working. It's a hard process. And so the more open you can be to asking for help, the better. On the flip side, there's also asking for help too soon. So I was this kind of person, and this kind of person I find generally is not really wanting to struggle. I was the kind of person that didn't want to struggle. I just wanted everything to work, and I wanted it to be easy. And as I've said, this is not an easy process. And so I also would look out for and be cautious of not using your instructor or other students as a crutch. And so what would this look like to not use them as a crutch? It would look like, first of all, Googling error messages yourself. It would look like trying out a few different things on your own and seeing if one thing will work. And more than anything else, it's about thinking for yourself, trying to force yourself to think through why are things not working 
and why do they work when I make this random change or whatever it happens to be. The thing is you want to develop your own problem solving skills and if you ask for help too soon, then you're going to not allow yourself to develop those skills. Another part of being proactive is to have a disciplined schedule. So especially if you're in a full-time bootcamp, but maybe even more so if you're in a part-time bootcamp, you really need to manage your time well. And so I would plot out on your calendar of choice, the curriculum, when things are due, and when you think you need to have things done by in order to stay on track. This is a huge part of not only staying on track to graduate on time, but just getting things done in general. And so I would highly encourage taking a disciplined and scheduled approach to making sure that you get everything done. Another part of being proactive is coming to meetings prepared. So this could be mentor meetings or instructor meetings if your boot camp happens to offer those. But regardless of what the meeting is, whether or not it's a one-on-one -on -one with your mentor or an optional office hours, or just informally asking someone for help. You wanna make sure you're prepared, you wanna make sure you have your questions down, and you also wanna make sure that you don't take up too much time in the case of being in an open office hours where there may be other people that also need help. My third principle is to learn in public, and this actually isn't an idea for me, it's an idea from this guy, Sean Wang, and it's also an idea that I've talked about before on the channel a fair bit. And so I'll summarize it for you here. The whole idea behind learning in public is to create what Sean calls learning exhaust. So the whole idea here is that you're creating content based on what you're learning. So that could be newsletters or tutorials or cheat sheets or YouTube videos or cartoons. And so the whole idea here is that you are trying to be helpful to yourself from three months ago and create the things that you wish you'd had. And in doing so, you help reinforce concepts that you're learning and you also inadvertently build a personal brand. Learning in public is one of the most important things that you could do. And so if you're not sure where to start, I would suggest writing daily on LinkedIn, just, hey, this is what I learned yesterday. This is how I'm feeling about the process. And then when you have larger things to share, write Twitter threads summarizing either how things worked or parts of the journey that you think would be helpful to others. You've got to start somewhere, but I think those are two pretty accessible ways to start creating content based on what you're learning. My fourth principle is to start your job search now. There are a few different reasons for that. One being that it's easier to do anything if you've got a little bit of momentum. And there are a few different things you can do during your bootcamp to build momentum for your job search when that day eventually comes. So some things you could do to start your job search while you're encoding bootcamp, attend a local meetup, even better, speak at the meetup. You can research local companies that you would be interested in working in and start to reach out to some of their decision makers by searching on LinkedIn. You can research remote first companies that you think would be open to hiring juniors. You can start to put together your personal website and your resume. All these things you can do just so that you have a basis, a foundation of something to work off of when you start applying to jobs. The point is you wanna have a bit of a network and you wanna be able to hit the ground running after graduation. And so doing these things will help you get there. All right, those are my four principles for how to succeed in coding bootcamp. I hope you found them helpful. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and self-employment. So consider sticking around, but regardless, thanks so much for being here. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.